All right, guys, welcome to the video today. So in this video, we're going to be breaking down all the changes that I would like to see in PvP. And normally for my videos, I don't have a script. I don't have any piece of paper. I know a lot of people like, you know, they get a piece of paper and they write everything down. Normally, I don't do any of that. But for this video, I decided, hey, it's a special occasion. I'm pretty sure the video will come out a lot better if I actually organize what I'm about to say. Um, so I'm going to break it down into three different categories. I'm going to talk about weapons, classes, and then matchmaking. And I just wanted to say that, remember, these are my opinions and you're probably going to have different ones. Uh, this is just coming from my experience playing the game and I've been playing it for a very long time and I feel like I, I know what generally is good for the game and what would work out for the game. Um, but remember, this is just my opinion. So if you do disagree, then let me know why you disagree in the comments, but you don't have to attack me or, or anyone who else or anyone else who agrees with me or, or maybe disagrees with me and you in the comment section down below. Uh, so without further ado, let's get right into the video. To start it off, I wanted to make sure I, you know, I chose the most important topic, right? And I feel like weapon balance is the big thing. Obviously, classes matter. If you have a certain class that's overpowered or underpowered, that does need some attention. But I feel like weapons are the biggest priority right now, especially with the whole like primary weapons are not good enough thing. I kind of wanted to address that and express what I think would be the best changes for primaries and weapons as a whole. Uh, so the first thing is hand cannons. I think they should have the same uh, base range and hit registration that they had in year one. There are a few differences. If you remember your one, when you think of hand cannons, what do you think of? You don't think of, you know, any sort of, you don't think of the fulcrum. You don't think of legendary hand cannons. You think of Thorn two tapping you, last word two tapping you, and getting sprayed down by hip fire. And that's what people did not like, uh, which I can completely, you know, agree with in a sense. So you keep the range, you keep the the same exact hit registration, but you would give up the things that made, you know, Thorn and last word so notorious uh, with their, you know, quote unquote cheesy mechanics. So the Thorn burn mechanic would stay the same as it is right now you'd have the same fuel of the last word you wouldn't have any hip fire bonus damage you wouldn't have any 111s while ADS it would generally feel the same the hit registration would just be a lot better another issue that I have with hand cannons is, is that we have two archetypes of hand cannon that pretty much goes completely unseen um, if you're watching someone stream chances are if they're using a legendary hand cannon you're gonna see poundrome or you're gonna see IS Luna but for the most part you're not really gonna see anything else you have ill will and you have weapons like the revelator which although they're pretty common and you see them drop uh, fairly often in PvP, you don't actually see people using them. And if you do use them or see people using them, most of the time it's just them trying out their weapon that they just got as a drop. I played like three games, I think, with mine because I got it from a drop in PvP and I didn't like it too much. The main issue, I think, especially with Ill Will, is that for, for hand cannons right now, right, you have to have rifled barrel or else the, the hand cannon registration is just horrible. Like, it's so inconsistent to the point where there is literally no point in using it. So for Ill Will, you have such terrible stability and if you have to run rifled barrel you're still gonna have to you know survive with terrible rate of fire terrible stability and just okay range and okay hit registration and you're not able to recover from missed shots or misregistered shots like an ice luna can if you miss a shot or if you have it lined up and it just miraculously doesn't hit them it's not as big of a deal because you can shoot right back but if you miss one you know headshot with ill will you're pretty much screwed and the same issue kind of carries over to the revelator it's not the same exact thing but for a weapon like revelator you have to take advantage of that super high fire rate and the main way of doing that is by spamming it as fast as you can and for that you need really high stability unfortunately the stability by itself isn't too great along with the range so you have to kind of choose do you want actually good hit registration or do you want to be able to spam the gun it's just not really in a good place right now because there's no actual advantage to using them so I'd like to see a little bit of a, of a change in those weapons uh, specifically for high impact low rate of fires I'd like to see the same rate of fire as I as Luna which does sound a little bit crazy but you know you have to think about the stability right the stability is horrible on this thing like if you can if you can control the recoil I think that's generally pretty impressive you also have to keep in mind that you're not really two tapping anyone it's meant mainly to just be like a big hitter so I, I think that that whole like super low rate of fire hand cannon just won't work out for PvP but if you do play around with the stability or maybe even the range or the handling speed you can get a weapon that hits really hard and hits as hard as the the ill will does but at the same time you can actually use it in PvP without putting yourself at a massive disadvantage 
advantage. You have to also remember that I don't know exactly what it would look like if they implemented the changes where the hit registration is as good as it was in year one. So maybe the changes I suggested to Illwill wouldn't work out that great, and if the if the registration was too good and it was too easy to control, obviously that would be an issue. Um, but if Bungie ends up watching this video, they would kind of know. Uh, you know, they'd obviously play test it, right? So they'd know if that would work or not. Obviously, it's just a suggestion. I also think that the whole low impact, high rate of fire uh, hand cannons would also benefit greatly from the hit registration fix. So if you make it so that rifle barrel isn't a necessity perk to actually have usable hit registration on the gun, that leaves you options to experiment with brace frame or any sort of uh, stability increasing perk. And I think that if you have a revelator with something like hidden hand range finder in brace frame, it might actually perform like extremely well. Moving on to changes I'd like to see with pulse rifle. For me, Pulse Rifles should have the damage that they had at late House of Wolves and early Taken King. I feel like that's when Pulses were like at their prime spot, and I actually really enjoyed that meta. Um, in fact, that was one of my favorite metas so far. Shot shotguns were still good, they're very powerful, the handling on them felt great, they felt quick, but at the same time, primaries were very strong as well. You had the vendor Hawksaw, which was um, obviously a crowd favorite, everyone loved using that, and it felt super strong to me. Um, you had high caliber rounds on, it just felt like a, a great overall primary weapon. That's what I feel like they should feel like moving forward in the future. They're kind of like a, a version of a hand cannon, except for the time to kill, the potential time to kill, isn't as low but the consistency and I'd say like the overall like the overall average time to kill might be lower for a pulse rifle user that's pretty accurate compared to that of a hand cannon user because for hand cannons if you miss that one shot that means your time to kill shoots up like dramatically but if you only miss a few bullets from a pulse or from a three round burst or whatever it's not as big of a deal the very last thing I wanted to cover for pulses is the whole high caliber rounds dilemma right now and if you haven't seen that high caliber rounds is a perk that makes it so the person you're shooting at is going to get an increased flinch effect on their screen. So if you're shooting at someone with high cal, their screen is going to be jumping over the place. If you combo that with a weapon like, uh, you know, Clever Dragon that shoots extremely fast, their screen just bops and it just jumps all over the place. And the thing that has kept this, this perk kind of balanced for the last 12 months or, or whatever it has been, um, is that you have to kind of sacrifice a perk to get it, right? So you can't run small bore, you can't run, you know, there's certain key perks to a weapon that you can't run in conjunction with high caliber rounds because they go in the same slot. And the new dilemma is that the Clever Dragon, which is the Iron Banner Pulse Rifle, it's the same archetype as a Grasp of Malik, is that you can actually run Brace Frame along with high caliber rounds. So you can still max out the stability and be using high caliber rounds at the same exact time. When I first heard about this, I didn't really think it would be too much of an issue. And uh, you know, at the time of me having my Clever Dragon, so I don't have high caliber rounds on mine and it performs amazingly without it. But then I go into a rumble a week later when everyone has high caliber rounds. And even if you start the gunfight at their head or at their chest, your, your gun, no matter how ahead you are in the gunfight, it just jumps all over the place. And people, people are very hesitant to say, let's nerf a perk on a primary. But for me, it's like, it's not helping you combat secondaries that well. Like obviously Clever Dragon, even by itself, without any sort of high caliber rounds attachment, it's gonna combat snipers extremely well. The sniper flinch is very heavy right now and any pulse rifle of any sort is gonna do that just fine. Uh, but with high caliber rounds, it's not helping you kill a shotgunner that's running at you with a you know storm melee any faster. It's just ruining perfectly even gunfights, if that makes any sense. So that's my opinion on it. Do you guys have any differing opinions? Do you think that Clever Dragon is actually very balanced with high caliber rounds? Do you think it should stay on the gun? Do you think that's kind of the perk that defines it? Let me know in the comment section down below. This is just my experience with me playing with a Clever Dragon without high caliber rounds versus a full lobby with high caliber rounds. Um, but I I, I'm kind of interested to see if you guys have kind of experienced the same issues that I have, um, but as I mentioned before, just leave that in the comment section down below. For the last primary change in this video, I'm going to be talking about scout rifles. And for me, scout rifles, they seem like the weapon that should kind of reward extreme precision while you're being shot at. Because obviously, like in, in maps like Destiny's, you know, you know, map rotation or whatever you want to call it, there's not very, very many big maps, like maps that you would actually want to run a scout rifle on for the purpose of killing people at extremely long range. You can play on maps like Twilight Gap or, you know, Shores of Time or, or whatever and do good occasionally. But even 
even then you're probably better off just using a Mida. I feel like the whole legendary scout rifle scene is very bland right now and no one really ever uses them. So for me, I would like it to be kind of, you know, it rewards you for being able to hit those shots while you're getting flinched. Because for me, I feel like flinch is the biggest thing when I have a scout rifle on. It just feels like I can't compete with the flinch output of a hand cannon or, or a pulse rifle at any sort of distance that I would actually use my scout rifle or my primary at. I think that every scout besides the Mida archetype, because I feel like if you added these changes to a Mida, it may make it a little bit too powerful or too strong, but for me, I feel like an appropriate change was it would you would get like a kind of a flinch reduction while you have a scout out with also increased uh, flinch output. So the person you're shooting is flinching more, and if you're getting shot by a clever dragon or by an ice luna, you're flinching a little bit less than you normally would. It wouldn't really be anything too drastic or, or too extreme, but for me, when I'm using a scout rifle, I feel like a lot of my kills stop, um, you know, like one shot before I could get that kill. So like I get like three shots on them and then the flinch just builds up so much on the gun from being pulsed or hand cannon to the point where I can't get that last shot in. Like your scope, you just feel like so weird for some reason when you're getting like pulse rifled or hand cannon. Just try that in general when you have a scout rifle on. I feel like it's very awkward and if you have some sort of slight flinch or reduced flinch, if you're a good enough player with good enough aim and, and, and shot pacing to the point where you can hit those shots while still undercover and at a close range with a relatively slow shooting weapon, I personally feel like that should be rewarded. For special weapons, I didn't really want to cover them too much. The main purpose of this video and this portion of the video being the whole weapon portion, I want it to mainly focus on primaries, but for me, I would like to see a few changes to snipers and shotguns. I'm not going to speak on fusion rifles because for me, I haven't used them, so I don't think any sort of opinion I generate has any authority or any meaning because a lot of people will use them religiously and they probably know a lot more about them than I do and I'll leave the video making for, for changes to fusion rifles up to them and their suggestions, whether it be in a video format or, or a forum post, whatever it may be, I think, I think they have a little bit more authority and a little bit more uh, experience on it. For, so for snipers, for me, I feel like they should have the original handling they had in Vanilla Destiny. I do think that the aim, the aim value should be the same as it was originally, but that's not really a huge thing for me. Like for me right now, the aiming is fine. Like I don't think it zooms in too much. I've just gotten used to it. And it was kind of an upset at first and a lot of people were upset about it, including me. But at this point, it doesn't really concern me too much. I do think that the snapshot nerf was a little bit ridiculous and that in a meta like this where people were getting mad at people for hard scoping, I don't know why snapshot, the, the perk that makes it so people aim in quicker and are more likely to move around and be aggressive snipers, I don't know why that was taken away. It, it just doesn't seem like a very smart nerf to me, especially considering that quick draw does the same thing except for more efficient anyways. So the snapshot nerf to me just seemed a little bit pointless and uh, kind of a weak move and I feel like snipers could benefit from having that revoked. For shotguns, I honestly feel like they're in a pretty good place right now and people don't really realize this, but it's not the shotgun itself that makes them so annoying or so overpowered. Uh, when you're complaining about shotgun players, who are you generally facing? You're playing against people who are really good with shade step shotgun, they're really good with the movement on that, they're very good with jug shotgun, they're very annoying with jug, sh or jug shotgun or they're very annoying and very persistent with running at you like an animal using storm collar melee. So it's not the shock in itself that's extremely overpowered or perhaps annoying to some players. We kind of shift like we have people complain about shotguns and then snipers, shotguns and snipers, and we rotate back and forth. But it, that's not the main reason that they seem so annoying. It's just the fact that you have so many abilities that complement shotguns, like extreme melees, like pretty much every warlock melee, titan movement, hunter movement. It all feels really good when you're playing with a shotgun. But if you give a gunslinger a shotgun, you're not, you're probably not going to think they're too overpowered. So for me, I would like an increase in handling for them I feel like they're a little bit sluggish right now and what that promotes is that you just can't switch to them easily like for me if I'm playing I, I'm kind of I'm not there's no incentive for me to use my primary and then maybe switch to my shotgun to, you know shoddy someone to finish them off there's no like incentive to switch back and forth between primary because it seems so sluggish so whatever engagement you get into you you just stick with that with whatever weapon you have out and it seems like when players die with a shotgun 
um because the way it works in destiny whatever weapon you die with that's the weapon you spawn with so if you die with a shotgun which you will probably over and over and probably a lot more often than you would with a sniper you're gonna spawn up with a shotgun again and there's no incentive to switch and that doesn't directly apply to the or, or relate to the whole handling thing that's kind of just i kind of went off on a tangent but i feel like people would be encouraged to actually switch back and forth between their weapons more if it wasn't so slow and sluggish feeling. Moving into the next portion of the video, I have realized that I'm taking a little bit too much time and that this video is a little bit lengthy so far, so I'm gonna try my best to keep the next portion of the video where we talk about classes a little bit condensed and not as you know not quite as long as it normally would be i do feel like kind of as a general opening statement that i feel like influence of discipline intellect and strength should go down a little bit so the cooldowns on grenade uh melees and super should go down it does make the game a little bit funner i guess or more enjoyable for some people but if we're talking about actually promoting gunplay then having it where you can regenerate your grenade in 25 seconds and your melee in 30 seconds or whatever it may be seems to be a little bit ridiculous and this number has gone um, I guess up the, the speed has gone up but the number has gone down so you, you you basically regen your grenade a lot quicker now than you ever could in 1.0 and it seems like with every update we're getting closer and closer and closer to having t5 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 um, so that's just my opinion so moving on the first subclass I wanted to cover is the Sun Singer so I think that the, the vanilla tag radius would be enough to make the class feel very strong yet not overpowered. You still have the melee nerf, you still have the viking funeral nerf, but at the end of the day you still have the very good tag radius that made the firebolt so um, notorious in the first place and that's kind of the only adjustment I would make to Sunsinger. Moving on with Stormcaller, I'd like to see a little bit of a decreased visual effect when you're being chained by uh, the arc lightning from Stormtrance. I feel like the main reason why it's so hard to kill now is that if they get any sort of chain on you, like it, it, it feels impossible to shoot them. Even if you have a shotgun, even if you have, you know, a close interpersonal shotgun, if they get near you and they start chaining you with lightning, it is like impossible to see them. I think a, a decrease in range with the whole Stormcaller melee would be a good thing to see, but I don't exactly know how I would balance it. Moving on to changes I would like to make to Titans, I don't really know exactly what I would do and I want to keep this very brief, but for Striker, I think that the shoulder to charge speed should be reverted to what it was for the past two years and what it was in Vanilla Destiny, Destiny Year 1, and Destiny Year 2. I would also like to see a 20% uh, decrease in armor that Jug provides. I feel like a lot of times when people get warriored when they're trying to use their primary by people using Jug, it's not like it's not like it's super dramatic and super out of the question whether they would have killed them or not. What really frustrates people is when they have a hand cannon or a pulse rifle and they just survive. The Jug Shield just survives by like one shot or one pulse rifle burst to the point where they get killed by someone who ran across the map with a shotgun. Maybe that's just me and personally I like I don't have a big issue with it but based on what I've heard from the community I feel like that would be a satisfactory nerf like kind of a compromise to the people that love Jug and to the people that despise it and hate playing against it. For the defender I don't really know exactly what I would do. I feel like there's not really anything you could do to make it a better PvP class without like completely rehauling how it works. So I feel like for now it's solid enough to the point where it's not like a terrible class but at the same time, if we wanted to make it a super strong class, you'd have to kind of completely redo how it works, which I don't really think should be done because it's a very unique class and I like how it feels. So for me, I'd like for Defender to stay virtually the same that it is now. And for Sunbreaker, the only thing I can really think of is an increase in hit registration for the Sun Charge ability. So when you pop your super, you have a choice between having I believe, I believe a longer duration of the super and being able to sun charge people. So you run up to them, you press R1, it's basically like a super aim assisted shoulder charge that one shots people and can one shot supers. But a lot of times you'll see people and it's kind of like that short stop issue with blade where it just doesn't work. Like they'll use it like four times and it just doesn't hit the person. So whatever they did to blade to make the hit registration a little bit better, I think should also be applied to sun charge. For hunters, the only thing that kind of left me puzzled is the whole gunslinger nerf, like who asked for throwing knives in trip mines to have less damage? Like it wasn't huge, it didn't affect people massively, but they're just little things that I think upset people and kind of 
kind of made people think about Destiny in the wrong way, right? Like it kind of rubbed them the wrong way and it rubbed me the wrong way. When you get a class that is already extremely rarely used and you don't see it at a top tier level at all, and then on top of that you nerf it. So I'd like to see those changes reversed and take it back to how throwing knives felt and the damage that they dealt in year one and vanilla destiny as well as trip mines sticking people not a huge issue but then again if you can't stick people that would be very nice as well i don't really think there's many changes i'd make to blade dancer skip grenades are incredibly annoying should they actually be nerfed i'm not quite entirely sure like if there are things that i'm not passionate or or completely certain about you know, like decisions that I'm not certain about making, then I don't really think I should be like expressing them as this needs to be done. But could changes be made to skip grenades? Personally, I, I think that the tracking is a little bit too fast on them. And it feels like if they just throw in, it automatically just like latches onto you and doesn't let go. And even if you're like skating away on a Titan or, or surfing away on a Warlock or whatever, it seems like you can never outrun them. And I feel like the damage isn't a huge thing, even though they do like do a ton of damage. I think it's like 140 or 150 damage. I feel like that's not the biggest issue. It's that even when you're running away from them, somehow they can still catch you. Like, I, I don't know why or how. But I feel like having a little bit, just a tiny, tiny decrease in speed could go a long way. So for the final portion of the video, I wanted to talk about matchmaking. And there's been the whole like skill-based matchmaking rants in the past where I've talked about how I hate it so much. But for me, all I really want right now is I want two playlists, right? So you have ranked and then an unranked playlist. So for the ranked playlist, I think that the skill-based matchmaking should be as brutal as possible. It should be pairing you against the best people that it can possibly find um, based on the rank you currently have in that playlist. So when I jump on games like Overwatch or if I'm playing Halo Remastered with some of my friends, like if I, if I get on there and I want to play competitively, I go to the rank playlist and I want to play like the best people. And if I get creamed, it's not a big deal because that's like a really good way to learn. And right now, even if we're playing like game battles online like me and inspire play game battles like we literally face tougher competition queuing into the doubles playlist in public matches than we find on game battles which is meant to have like competitive ladder matches and i think that having a brutal skill-based matchmaking aspect to ranked will add a lot of competition and if you you know there's incentive to do well there's incentive to try as hard as you can and you can go in there only when you're wanting to do that but if you want to go in, in a non-ranked environment, you go to a public playlist where there's no skill-based matchmaking. You have connection-based matchmaking, which basically ensures that there's not going to be much lag. It's going to be very minimal. And on top of that, you're not playing against the same exact type of player. You're getting super good players, you're getting average players, you're getting bad players, and you're getting blueberries. You're getting the whole entire mix and it's just more enjoyable to play. Some games you'll play super good people, some games you'll play super bad people. That's what made pubs so much fun is that eventually you run into that batch, you run into that batch of perfect people that you just have a super fun time playing against. And, and that's just the biggest thing for me is, is it's, not, it's not a huge deal if skill-based matchmaking stays in the game, but if they had a ranked and unranked playlist with incentives to do well, I think that would be like super fun to play. That's basically it for the video today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any sort of disagreements or, or you wanted to discuss the whole topic, uh, then just put that in the comment section down below and I'll be, um, I'll, I'll try my best to respond. But if I don't respond, just know that I am reading pretty much every single comment that you leave on this video. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope to see you guys in my next video.